Hello and welcome back to Europe 1100 and I've been doing a little bit of off screen, nothing too dramatic, but I just wanted to kind of cut out a little bit of the money making and I can easily explain what I've done so you can replicate it if you're playing along with me or if you want to start or anything like that or if you're just interested. Anyway, basically we've got some linen here that I purchased at London as you can see. Look at look at the price at London. It was literally 54 per one and I can sell it here at York for almost 300 per item. So I can literally just sell all of that for 4200 and we now have enough as you see there. Look at that. Six skill points in trade just from that one transaction. Absolutely fantastic. So now we have enough to be able to do, you guessed it, a caravan. And I think I will probably be doing that, but um, I don't actually have a caravan focused companion. And I actually will, I, I won't. <laughs> I won't have a caravan focused companion because the guy that I was actually planning on making my caravan person is now stationed in London so that he can participate in tournaments. And I've done this strategy before, but it's, I, I don't know whether it's particularly well known or not. But for me personally, I feel like this really makes a huge difference to your overall, uh, your overall earnings. And basically what it means is, well, you take a combat focused companion, someone that you think is going to be doing relatively well in the tournaments, and you place them... With this little plus icon right here, you place them into the town itself and they'll just stay there for the entirety of the time. And because, of course, they are indeed a member of your clan, they are inevitably going to be giving you most of their winnings. So that's kind of yeah, that's kind of the deal here. Anyway, raw silk. I can actually take raw silk, sell this at York for 53. We were just at York. So this is going to make a pretty significant difference. I haven't been to Kirkwall in quite some time. So as you can see, the rumors are indeed fading. So that's obviously going to be a little bit problematic. But I can buy some silk here. I'm just going to buy 50 units of it or something like that. I've also been doing a little bit of... Um, oh, there's actually some pretty decent, uh, pretty decent velvet right here too. I might as well buy both of those. And we also have linen, as you can see right here. And this also sells at York for a decent amount too, because we were just there. Of course, it's going to sell for a decent amount. All right. Yeah. Anyway, so as I said to you before, I'm going to explain a little bit about what I was doing. As you can see, I'm actually going to spend four thousand here. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, kind of, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit worried actually about spending this amount, but. We're going to do it. There we go. We're going to do it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually make our way back over to York. And this is basically what I've been doing. I've basically just been doing Kirkwall, Glasgow, York, London. So basically just going from, you know, point A to point B to point C and basically just getting all of that out of the way. And you can see here, I can literally just sell that, that um, whatever it was, velvet or whatever, uh, for 2000. Uh, the linen is actually not selling for as much because I obviously sold a whole bunch here. So I'm actually not going to sell the linen right now. I will sell the silk. That's going to get me 4,000. There you go. We're back up to 15,800 15, and we don't really, uh, we don't really have any problems because I've got a bunch of linen here as well, which I can hopefully sell at Kirkwall for a decent number. And that, yeah, so that's basically what I've been doing and just rinse and repeating basically. So just going into the marketplace, seeing what kinds of prices we have available here and then making a good go of things. So um, yeah, oh yeah, by the way, by the way, I used a strategy that someone actually mentioned in the comments. Thank you very much for this because this is always something that I tend to forget. And maybe, maybe some of you will forget it as well. I don't know, maybe you'll forget it too. But for me personally, I always forget that this is possible. Look at this. Look at the look at the price of hogs right now. Do you see the price of hogs right now? The price of hogs, 27 per one. 27 per one. This is absolutely insane. If I purchase a whole bunch of this, look at this. It just goes up by, by one, goes up by two, goes up by three. I can literally purchase a huge amount of them, right? So I'm going to probably purchase almost all of them to be honest and we are then gonna do something very cool because this is obviously something that as I say I don't really do much of this because it's just not something that is in my 
I don't know, in my field of vision or in my memory or, you know, just generally in my mind. But you can slaughter these hogs, right? So I'm going to slaughter every single one of the hogs. And now we have 74 pieces of meat and 74 pieces of hides. Oh, yeah. Mm, you can guess where this is going. So I've, I've obviously been making some pretty significant strides with this strategy as well. So you can see here, I can literally sell these hides for a significant amount. Obviously, I'm not going to go that much lower than 36 or so, but there you go. Look at that. We got 2,000. Obviously, we're not getting trade skill for this action, but we're getting money, and we've already invested a pretty significant amount in what we've gotten here, and we've also gotten some meat for free. So technically, what I could do is I could go to York, I could go to London, and I could sell this meat over there for a pretty decent profit. Because you can see here, you gain two resources in comparison to the one that I have just bought. Because obviously I, pu I purchased one hog for around 27, 28, 29, 30 gold each one, right? So when you get meat or when you get hides for that price, it's basically a two for one. You're basically getting two for one. So you're doubling your money, uh, well, basically instantly, basically instantly. So it is so incredibly useful. So thank you very much for that as well. We're going to go into this tournament here. If you don't like tournaments, then you can just skip ahead a little bit here. Oh, this is a, oh, this is a massive melee. I'm not a big fan. I do not like big melees. Oh, actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got a two-handed. I, I might be quite happy with this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There we go. That's what I like to see. Yes. I love the big swings that we can do against the opponent. There we go. Go for the head. Go for the head, Bruce. Yes, there we are. Fantastic. Oh, that was... Oh, it's always so fun when it actually hits. You know what I mean? It's so satisfying when you get a massive, massive hit with a big two-handed weapon of some kind. Hope that my force... Oh, no. Are you serious right now? I can't believe he actually died very very worried about actually doing any kind of battling that where we end up in a one-on-one -on -one situation to be honest this guy's gonna die there we go he's basically not blocking against me this is gonna be a bit problematic oh no maybe not he didn't block the thrust and that guy didn't block the overhead <laughs> okay that that was that was interesting i have no idea what what they were even thinking right there they had a huge advantage being one versus two but they just decided to you know kind of well, you know, do the thing to the bed that, you know, they, yeah, you know, they just couldn't get to the bathroom in time. Anyway, so the point is, here we go. Let's do this. Uh, he's ready. Or maybe not. Oh, no. I messed up. Oh, do you see that? Oh, I messed up with the, with the thrust. Oh, no, there we go. Okay, he's dead. All right. <laughs> but... This is also what I've been doing in a little bit of spare time, because obviously I do want to try and gain some renown. And now you may be thinking, okay, well, why didn't you fight any bandits? You know, you may be asking me, why didn't I fight any bandits? Well, here's the thing with that. There are none. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's the answer, you know. There are no bandits. And there's actually an axe here that we could potentially smelt. I'm thinking right now that I'm probably just going to sell this for the moment because I have actually found that the smithing materials are not that good, but that's just because we're not... Um, yeah, we, we basically what we need to do, okay, this is the strategy, at least from what I've what I've seen or what I've kind of deduced from this. Basically, any l very low tier weapon, and I'm talking about a weapon from a bandit fight or something like that, you know, that is something that you probably want to smelt down. But a really effective weapon that you get from a, a, a tournament or something like that, a really high quality weapon, maybe it's a better idea to just sell that. But yeah, you could see here, look at how much linen is being sold for here, or should we say is being bought here. 441. I'm getting literally 2,200 just from this. And we can also sell the hides here if we want to. I'm not going to, of course, because the hides are going to sell for more elsewhere. Same thing with the meat, of course. I haven't gone down to London or York yet, but there are so many different ways that you can make cash with trading. It's actually kind of insane because, as you see, I, I was down at like, what was it, 5,000, 6,000 or something like that. I saw the hogs were really, really cheap. 
and I decided, hey, you know what? Let's just go for it. You know, let's just go for it because that seems to be a super, super good strategy for basically just doubling up your money. Because if you can get hogs for less than 30 or so, you're going to be really, really pleased with that. You really will be super, super pleased because no matter where you go, most of the time, hides and meat are going to sell for more than you purchased. Obviously, you're not going to get trade skill or anything like that. So obviously, that's going to be a bit of an issue. Ooh, now this is a net guard. Okay, this could be actually a pretty decent upgrade for us. Yes, this is a very, very nice upgrade for us. So apologies if you don't like tournaments, but... Personally, I actually really like doing tournaments in Scotland. I think they're super fun because they actually give me two-handed weapons. And I really love the two-handed weapons. Unfortunately, my... Ah, my teammates, really. My teammates. Why are you like this? I don't know why. I don't know why. Kill him. Yes. There we go. Yes. There we are. Okay, we're, we're fighting. We're fighting as a team. Let us do this. There we go. Nice. That was some... That was a good hit. Okay, let me just try not to get killed by this guy. There we go. Nice. Yes. Double headshot. Double headshot. That is what we love to see. Do it. Oh, yeah. I have a bow. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Let me actually just shoot that. <laughs> that actually worked. Okay. I really wasn't expecting that to work, but there you go. All right. We actually did something. Okay. Oh, this is one versus one. Wait a minute. Where's my opponent? Ah, over here. Okay. This might be a bit, uh, a little bit troublesome. Oh, he's not blocking. Okay. He didn't block the overhead at all. Okay. That is weird. There we go. This fellow's blocking. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. These guys are a little bit lower level than the other ones, but so, you know, I don't know. Maybe that makes a difference. Maybe uh, the, the skill levels that they have makes a difference. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, let's kill that guy. Yes. Oh, no. We do not want to die. Oh, no. Oh, phew. Okay, that was a bit close. That was a bit close for my liking. Okay, there we go. And we've got one more opponent to fight. Let's go for the headshot. No, we weren't able to get the headshot. I misjudged the reach of the weapon. But we should be fine because he's blocking in the in incredibly wrong direction. <laughs> uh, it's like me. Yep, it's like me. Anyway, I do want to show you my character as well. Just so that you can kind of see what perks I've taken since the previous episode. There were two perks that I picked up. One was in trade and one was in uh, riding skill. Yeah. One was in writing skills, so we're going to be taking a look at that. Oh, we, we also have a level up and two more perks to go for here. So as you can see, I took veterinary. This gives us plus 20% hit points to the mount, plus 10% hit points to mounts of troops in your party. Of course, this is obviously fantastic for a wide variety of reasons. However, well strapped is just not that useful, at least I don't know. I personally don't think it's that useful in comparison to the other one. Uh, otherwise, apart from that, I have wholesaler instead of the other thing, which is appraiser. Usually, I would highly, highly recommend getting appraiser. But the only reason why I went for wholesaler is because I wanted to level up my trade skill that much faster. Because if you have a lower price penalty while selling trade goods, you're hopefully, I don't know whether this is true, but you're hopefully going to be able to get more skill from you know from trade so from making trades and so on and so forth because that's what i want i inevitably want to be able to level up my trade skill faster and selling equipment doesn't give you trade skill whereas selling trade goods does so that was my main thinking on that but Obviously, you can decide whatever you want to go for. Anyway, we're going to be going for form-fitting armor here. This obviously makes the most sense in the world because we basically want to be able to move super, super quickly. We want to be light on our feet. And I'm kind of not sure what to go for here because head basher is pretty good. However, swing speed, I think, is going to be my main thing here. I may decide to switch over to head basher a little bit later on when I may go for... Something like a uh, Smith two-handed mace. Someone actually mentioned in the comments that the two-handed mace, um, well, maces, shall we say, that you can smith are very, very good. So I thought to myself, okay, that sounds great. I, I would love that. I would very much appreciate that. So otherwise, what we're going to do is we're just going to go for another point in athletics here. I am, of course, going to be leveling up athletics quite a bit. And we're just going to level up our social skill somewhat as well, because I would like to get charm skill leveled up too. I do have a point in medicine as well here, by the way, so that I will be able to get to 25, hopefully at some point. Did I purchase anything, by the way? Did I purchase anything? And I don't think so, but I am going to be equipping this. Thank you very much. And let's have David, our surgeon, who we gained and I haven't told you about yet. 
basically this is our surgeon yes i found him got him for 500 gold and he's italian and he's got great skills um uh, but what's really funny and this is something that i i really don't like about the encyclopedia do you see what skills he's good at do you see, you know, anything about him that's actually really, really detailed? No, you don't. You literally just see athletics, one-handed, and throwing skill. Who cares? <laughs> no offense, no offense now, right? But who cares about these skills? No one does. The only thing that you care about when getting a companion, at least for me personally, is their important skill. For example, I only know that this guy is good at medicine because he's got the suffix the surgeon in comparison to if he was just some random you know yeah, horse thief or something you know because we obviously we, we had the horse thief fellow that i actually told to stay in london at the moment to do any tournaments that pop up there but the only way that i actually knew about him being a surgeon is the fact that i could just go here and he has 47 medicine skill which obviously isn't amazing but this is the only guy that i've come across so far that's actually had that kind of name so i thought to myself yes okay we're just going to go ahead and do that okay so we've got some hides we've got some meat i actually purchased some pottery so we can sell that in york for a pretty decent amount by the way i have attempted to become a mercenary for the kingdom of scotland because that's actually what I wanted to do. I actually wanted to try to become a mercenary so that I might be able to earn a little bit of extra cash, might be able to fight some bandits, might be able to fight some minor vassals even, you know? It would actually be very cool if we could fight some minor vassals. And did you see that 18 band of looters just up there that were attacked immediately by one of those vassals? Yeah, that's the only looter party I have seen in a while. So let's just say that England and Scotland and uh, possibly Wales as well doesn't really have a very big population of bandits, which is actually quite sad. Anyway, we're just going to sell a bunch of meat here as well because I can, I might as well. And we're going to keep some just because it is actually rather good for our own forces. And we're going to sell all the hides here. So we're going to get another 4,400 from that. We're going to get to 51 in trade. So we have another perk point to spend. And what are we going to go for here? Well, it's probably a good idea that we... Uh, probably... Uh, I, I actually don't know, to be honest. I think 30% carry capacity could be really good, but we are not the quartermaster of our own party right now. I mean, there doesn't seem to be a point in me, me doing that because my steward skill is so incredibly low. It, I mean, it's zero, so it makes no sense. So I'm going to go for market dealer, I suppose. That's probably going to make the most sense, I guess, if we have a... I don't know, maybe there's a problem in the future where we get attacked by some bandits and we need to escape or something. But yeah, my next port of call right now is to find a companion that can run caravans. That's literally all I want to do. Um, and apart from that, I would love it if there would actually be a tournament going on in London. I'm not entirely sure why the tournaments are not running right now, but I'm very much hoping that my, my fellow that I've left here... Uh, Mr. Horse Thief, as you can see, I'm kind of hoping that he's going to do a good job. Um, but that's basically his his only purpose, you know, that is his only purpose right here. Anyway, all these numbers that are now highlighted in green, that basically tells you what's a good price and what's a, ba what's a bad price, pretty much. So, for example, uh, all of these, this is pretty good. So I'm going to buy a little bit of this. I will buy two of these hunter horses as well, just so that we can move a little bit faster on the world map. And let's actually see, if is there anything else here that's actually decent? I mean, yes. Flax, of course, is very, very good. Iron ore is actually really good too. All right, let's buy some iron ore. I think I might buy all of it, actually. We could buy some hides here as well, which would sell at York for a decent number. But linen... Oh, look at the linen. We can sell that at Kirkwall for 456. We've just come here. Wow. Okay, we just came here from Kirkwall. So this makes all the sense in the world. And is there anything else here that we really want to go for? Yes, jewelry. Look at that. That sells for 700. Uh, someone actually told me about a very interesting strategy I'm gonna buy the leather as well even though that is an average price and not not lower than average but i'm gonna buy that anyway just because and i'm actually thinking to myself right now that i might want to purchase these tools as well because this is lower than average as you can see 
and it would be good if we could sell these at Glasgow. So that's exactly what we're going to do. There we go. All right. But yeah, there is a strategy that someone told me about in the comments as well. And I very much appreciate this, by the way. I, I always love being able to do these kinds of really cool things with trading because this is... Uh, this this is the reason why I feel like this game actually well this game and and uh, a number of other games that focus on options really makes a huge difference to your overall enjoyment of the experience because if you think about it think about how uh, okay, I can sell these tools for an insane amount right here look at that five thousand but yeah if you think about how annoying it would be if I had no bandits around, which I don't. I mean, I have very few bandits, and the bandits that are around are looters. And let's face it, looters are not exactly what I want to fight right now. I would like to fight sea raiders or something like that, so I'd probably have to go over to Ireland for that, or somewhere else. And, well, let's just say that there are none, and I have no one to fight, no one to get money from. What am I supposed to do in that respect? Well then you have the ability to do trade. You have the ability to do some tasks and so on and so forth. And that obviously makes a big difference. Unfortunately, I did not stop at York to sell this stuff. Ah, it seems like the linen is not actually that good anymore, but I can sell... Mm. Yes, the jewelry is also not very good here. Ah, you see? Prices can change very quickly, which is a shame, but that's okay. That's absolutely fine because we can just go back to Glasgow really, really fast and we can just sell that. But basically, yes. As I said, I wanted to become a mercenary with Scotland and they didn't allow me to because they're not actually at war against any faction right now. Which was actually quite disappointing because I think it would be really fun, um, you know, to help them and uh, to enter battles with them and so on and so forth. Okay, so we're just going to sell this. We're going to sell the jewelry, I suppose. That's going to sell for a pretty significant amount. And we can also sell the iron ore a little bit. We'll sell some of the linen too. That's going to give me another 5,000. I mean, you can see exactly, you know, why uh, trade skill is just so incredibly useful. I have 24,000 now. We started this episode with, what was it, 12,000 or something like that. So we basically doubled our money in that time. And I haven't really been that effective at it at the moment. I'm not really being too effective right now. I mean, you can see there, look at that. There's another 3,000. Super, super nice. I'm kind of hoping... Ah, where are the companions? That's the question. Where are the companions? Actually, I'm going to go over to Wales real fast. I haven't gone over there in quite some time. So I'm kind of hoping maybe they're going to have something really amazing for us. Maybe we are going to do that. I don't know. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll see what's going on with it. Otherwise, let's see if they have... Ah, there's a caravan ambush. Perfect. This is absolutely wonderful. Okay, this is exactly what we need. All right, so let me just take a quick look, see if there's anything here that we really badly want to buy. I could potentially get some pottery from here. As you can see, it does have a uh, lower than average cost, but I can buy tools at London for a decent amount. I can buy pottery. This is actually the cheapest place to buy pottery. So I'm going to buy some pottery and we're going to sell it at Glasgow. I've just got to remember that I have to sell the pottery at Glasgow. I'm not going to remember this, but let's just say that I will. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let's do the caravan ambush. I'm highly, highly doubting I'm actually going to be able to do anything here, but we're going to try. 27 men. All right. Uh, that's the question. Are we even going to be able to do this? Oh, wait a minute. Where are you going? He's traveling to Dublin. Oh, you absolute imbecile. Oh, you are annoying. Oh, yes. He's annoying, isn't he? Yes, he is annoying. Okay, yeah. So we're going to have to pay. This is the, the one thing that I am not very pleased about because I'm going to have to spend, as you can see, 621. And I don't actually have enough food to... Uh... <laughs> what? Are you serious right now that he's actually on the ocean? I'm not going to be able to do that. I am literally not going to be able to do that. Wow, clay is literally three here. Are you joking? That is so incredibly cheap. All right, so yeah, unfortunately, I think he's going to be attacked and I won't be able to complete the task because he's he's on the ocean and I don't have any I don't have any ships. I could I could buy a dinghy, I suppose. There's some raiders right there. I'd actually like to do that. Wait a minute. Let's go to the port. Talk to the shipwright. Could buy a dinghy for 4,000. I could buy a cog for 12,000. Um, 
Is that, is that enough? Oh, not enough. Is it? Wait a minute. Let's just see. Create new fleet. We're going to call it, um, I don't know, uh, Dauntless. There we go. All right. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, so there we go. So let's, um, oh, this is going to be, uh, yes, yes, yes. I know, I know, I know. I've got to get rid of some people. So, uh, okay, well, hmm. uh, yeah, the peasant obviously will get going. And I do need to keep my crossbowmen because they are uh, primarily my, my forces. So we're going to have to get rid of all these. And there we have it. And then we're going to have to set sail. Hopefully I can get there in time before they get destroyed. All of this for doing a caravan ambush. Isn't that funny? Oh, there's, there's no one here? Are you serious? Oh, now he's moving. You absolute idiot. Oh, I hate this guy. <laughs> oh, he really wanted to screw me over, didn't he? I literally had to spend 12,000 to get here. Uh, and these are the raiders. Literally, these are the raiders. Oh, wow. That's so funny. All right. <laughs> what do you bet I fail this now? If I fail this now, I will be livid. Okay, no, no. There we go. It's actually working. Okay. Let me see here. How do I... Uh, how do I target these guys, actually? Oh, no. Okay, wait a minute. There is a way to target them. All right, there we go. Now we can go in and fight them. I just had to check the uh, the key bindings in the options. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's do this. Okay, ooh. <laughs> this is not looking good. This is not looking good. But, but, uh, what's really cool about this, which does have the opportunity to, you know, potentially level up my roguery skill somewhat, even though I don't really have that much roguery, but what is very cool about this is that I will be able to take quite a few enemies prisoner because I do have this wonderful two-handed mace that is indeed capable of knocking them unconscious uh, if I can actually hit with it of course there we go oh look at that damage look at the damage from this thing it's actually crazy I'm gonna have to tell my forces to charge in I think because otherwise they are literally just gonna get surrounded by horse archers or something like that it's gonna be terrible nice hit there we go can we get a little bit more of that yes there we go nice that's what we want to see. Can I get more of that? Yes, there's another one. Oh, we knocked that guy off his mount. I love that. That's the reason why I said to you the sledgehammer is literally one of those things that you initially think to yourself, this weapon is a joke. You know, it looks like a croquet mallet, doesn't it? It really does look like a croquet mallet that you would use and then be like, oh yes, yes, good sir. I have my own croquet mallet. And then it turns out it's just a huge sledgehammer that you're just going to bonk someone on the head with it. But, <laughs> you know, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. It's just amazing. It's actually a lot better than I ever would have thought. And it really does do the business, as you can quite clearly tell. It really is just doing the utmost right now. And it's, it's funny as well because it's pretty slow, but it seems to... It seems to work with my timing quite nicely. I'm not really, um, you know, getting it mistimed that often. And seems to be working quite uh, quite smoothly, actually, for us. There we go. <laughs> and there you are. Wow, we basically took zero casualties. That's hilarious. I, I, I actually took only a little bit of a, a little bit of damage, actually, surprisingly enough. Anyway, there's six renown for us. And as you can see, we are now able to take those prisoners. And we can also level up these fellows. Now, I'm actually not entirely sure what to level them up into. I'm thinking swordsman right now because I feel like that would be a... Uh, I think that would be kind of fun to have some swordsmen to murder things with. So we're just going to do that. But they do become spearmen first. And spearmen are yeah, maybe not going to be that effective against the majority of enemies. But, uh, well... You know, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, let's just see. Okay, we got a new saddle. And we're just going to get David with a, a couple of things right there. And uh, yeah, now, now we're obviously in Dublin. And I have my own ship. So I suppose that's pretty good. All right, there we go. Thank you. You gave me 1,400. You gave me a little bit of charm skill. You got me some... Uh, you know, he got me some uh, some stuff as well. He got me some, uh, what what is it now? Loot. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. He, yeah, he got me some loot. So that's actually all right, I suppose. Wow, very, very little loot, actually, surprisingly enough. But there you go. Uh, we do have some pottery here. I can actually sell that for a decent amount because I actually purchased this for, as you can see, I purchased it for 58. So I might as well sell it here. It's going to get me 2,200. 
And I obviously bought clay at the nearby village. So I could basically just sell this right here. Uh, iron ore is not really selling for anything too amazing. And there doesn't seem to be anything else. Clay is very, it's a very low ticket item. And I'm not really, not really wanting to do a huge amount with that. Is there? Oh, look at that. Perfect. There's a guy here that may be able to run our caravans. So let's get him. There we go. You're only 500, sir. All right, that's perfect. And we're just going to ransom the prisoners. I don't see a point in doing anything else with them unless we were able to find a manual laborer quest. But even then, I would have to do a lot of running around and everything, and I personally don't really want to do that right now. Hey. So what we're going to do now, form a caravan. It's going to cost me 15,000. Do I have enough? I do. Ooh, just barely. Wow, okay. Uh... <laughs> Oh dear! Oh, I might have put myself in a in, in a bit of uh, <laughs> in a bit of jeopardy right now. Uh, yeah, this this might be a, a little harsh. Right. Uh, I could do the tournament. Maybe hope for something. A Highland War Spear. All right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants right now because I'm thinking to myself, okay, is this actually gonna be enough? Uh, you know, because I have a thousand. Obviously, I did purchase a ship, which was pretty... I think it's a good investment. That's the funny thing. That is a good investment. Ow. No, no. Don't get killed. Don't get killed. Oh, wow. These guys... What? These guys are not defending at all. What's, what's going on here? They usually do. I, I guess it's because they uh, they were outnumbered and they were kind of worried about the, uh, the enemy, or should we say our allies, actually doing anything. Get them. Yes. Yes. Headshot. Yeah, there we go. That's what we like. Okay, now, be careful, be careful. I actually want to eliminate the blue team. What's he doing? Why Why are you avoiding this guy? Are you serious right now? Do you see this? <laughs> that lit this guy literally avoided my ally, and he was like, yes, I will, uh, I will attack you and not your ally for some reason. I don't know why he decided to do that, but we're actually working with our new companion, which is quite funny too, so I I'm actually quite, quite happy about that. Let's just see. Nice. No. Yes. Yes. Whew. Yes, my companion is doing a great job. I, I mean, he does have some pretty decent uh, weapon skills. That's kind of why I thought, hey, you know what? Maybe he's going to be okay being a, a caravan leader or something. Oh. Well, uh, <laughs> never mind. Maybe he won't. Maybe he won't. Who knows? Anyway, we did get that Highland War Spear. Let's see how much it's actually going to cost to sell it. Because we might actually need it, you know. Um, but that's the thing. Basically what we can do now. Now that we have a caravan up and running. We can kind of relax a little bit. I mean not a massive amount obviously. Uh, we can sell this for 918. That's actually pretty good. Um, but yeah. Basically what we can do now. Is we can try to do a little bit more trading in Ireland. I'm obviously going to do this off screen. So that you don't have to, you know. Uh, sit through that because as I said it is very much an enjoyable activity for me I personally very much enjoy the whole trading aspect I find it quite relaxing and I think it's very satisfying as well because what you can do obviously is just you buy something for a low amount and then you're like oh sure where where do I go here you know I go up here and then I sell it for double the price and I'm like whoa that's crazy I love that you know that's very satisfying to me personally Obviously, I understand if that's not your thing. Anyway, I'm going to run around here. I'm going to see what we can do. Uh, there's only three cities in uh, in Ireland, so I'm not sure how well that's going to go. I do obviously have a ship now, so we are able to go elsewhere much more easily. I know someone did comment that um, you'd like you'd like us to travel around, and yeah, I would like... Nothing better than for us to, you know, travel all over the place and, and see exactly what's going on with, with all these various towns and to interact with a bunch of different, uh, different cultures and so on and so forth. But the ferry system can be very costly, as I just showed you. You know, literally the ferry, ferry cost me 600 but obviously me purchasing a ship was very expensive nevertheless so that's another thing that we've got to take into account so that's the kind of the reason why i was trying to build up an economy try to build up a really really large economy so that we can actually start getting into territory where i don't need to use the ferry points and i can just use my own ships that's kind of the the point there that i wanted to uh, hopefully do anyway that's going to be it for this episode i thank you very much for watching 
and I'll see you next time.